from a guy by the name of Raymond Ortland. Uh, he is the yes. former uh, founding pastor of Emanuel Church in Nashville, Tennessee. It issued one of the more foolish tweets I've ever seen from a pastor. I know you're not supposed to call somebody a fool. There's kind of a lot of ramifications to that. This warrants it. He tweeted, quote, never Trump, this time Harris, always Jesus. How should we think about this? This doesn't really surprise me from Ray Ortland. Unfortunately, he's got people like Russell Moore who are on staff with this church, but it is demoralizing because this is not a church in Nashville that's like waving the pride flag that everyone would look at and say, okay, that's not even a real church. No, these are people who probably consider themselves conservative Christians, probably agree with us on 99% of theological issues. And yet, if you saw a lot of what he posted during the BLM George Floyd era, he clearly has been duped by this toxic empathy, which has made him believe that the truth doesn't matter, that facts don't matter and has deluded people into thinking that Harris is somehow a better moral choice. I've heard pastors say well-meaning maybe pastors say, well, yeah, some of the policies on the Democrat side, we know they're demonic. They know we know they're bad. But Trump's personal character is really bad, as if Kamala Harris's character isn't worse. And policies last a lot longer than someone's personality or personal mistakes. There are a lot more consequences to that. And so this is the thing about toxic empathy is that it not only makes you wrong, but it can make you very, as you said, foolish. It can make you very stupid. And Christians aren't called to be stupid. No, we are called to be, what is it, gentle as doves and wise as serpents, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, innocent as doves. Thank you. So help me understand or how, how I can properly communicate, because I think there's a communication barrier at times when I'm in the church, when there is someone who is so convinced that Christianity is affirmation, not truth. How do we break through that? Because they say, for example, well, I don't want to judge. And in judging, there's you must uh, then tell somebody that you're not as good or you point out flaws. Yeah, you know, I have been speaking to a lot of pro-life pregnancy centers and a lot of pro-life organizations, a lot of churches, a lot of Christian women. And this is an idea they have that even if they personally believe, for example, that marriage is between a man and a woman, that they are obligated to not say that that actually love compels them to stay silent. And really, when you look at the history of the church, when you look at pagan Rome, it looks a lot like what America does today. There was a lot of gender confusion. Mm -hmm. There was sexual immorality, infanticide, and abortion were widespread practices. This changed over the decades and centuries because of the persistence of Christians who, against real persecution, against martyrdom against the tyranny of dictators like Nero said, no, actually, the child sacrifice is going to end. Actually, marriage is between one man and one woman. Actually, all people, even poor people, they matter. They spoke against these powerful, deadly ideologies of the day, even to their peril. That is who the church has always been. It's not about garnering our own political power. It's about creating a refuge for the most vulnerable. It is about the liberty to share the gospel. We've got a woman, Bevelyn, uh, Bevelyn Williams, who was just sentenced to three and a half years in prison by the Biden administration because of unlawful assembly. She protested outside of a pro-life or um, outside of an abortion clinic. That's who the church has always been. And we have a responsibility to stand up against the regimes that are exacerbating and enabling evil. That's what Christians have always done. It's not about getting political. It's about being a Christian. It's about taking the baton that has been passed to us by the martyrs, by the brave Christians who have stood in the stead of children and the most vulnerable for thousands of years. I think once you realize that, that that is the history of the church, that's the call of the Christian, and you get courage from the fact that that is our calling and that Jesus wins in the end, we can kind of forget about this silly, superficial, toxic empathy stuff, our fear of man, and just have courage to go forward. At the core of empathy is trying to please man, not God, is that I want to affirm the human being, not what God wants. Is that is that a fair summary at its core? 
At the core of toxic empathy, yes, it is about pleasing man, doing what's easy. And empathy is actually a very cheap replacement for virtue. It's a very cheap replacement for love, which is inextricably intertwined with the truth. With love comes actual responsibility. Empathy just allows you to feel a certain way. That's not necessarily what Christians are called to. We're called to something more, something bigger, something more thoughtful, something wiser, and something a lot stronger than toxic empathy.